So this time on the channel, let's turn an NOVNA into a grid dip meter. So most of you know, this is one of my favorite tools right here. These nano VNAs for a relatively small price can do a lot. They're about 50 bucks on Amazon. And with them, you can test and build antennas. You can check capacitance and inductance. You can prove or disprove the efficacy of coax. You can do a lot of things. But today what I want to do is I want to take a piece of wire and I want to make a grid dip oscillator coil. And that's what we're going to do over on the bench in a few minutes. So a grid dip oscillator or a grid dip meter is just basically the description of a device that sweeps a certain set of frequencies or outputs a certain set of frequencies that has to be adjustable. Sometimes it's manually adjustable, sometimes it's an automatic function. It'll sweep a certain range of frequencies. And at a certain frequency, you can place either a parallel LC circuit, so an inductor in parallel with a capacitor, or anything that's resonant at a certain frequency, so antennas, coax, is uh, possible options that you can put inside of this coil that isn't actually connected to whatever you're measuring, but will resonate because the coil has a frequency being generated within it. And what ends up happening is a transformer effect. So as you know, a transformer has two sets of coils of windings that aren't physically touching each other, but there's an inductive coupling between those two coils, and you get a transfer of energy from one coil to the next. That's essentially what's happening in a transformer, and we can step up or step down that voltage by uh, winding one set of coils with more turns than the other to change the relationship between current and voltage between those two coils. So a grid dip oscillator is doing something very similar the original grid dip oscillators were made of vacuum tubes, and that's where the word grid comes in. Grid meaning the grid in a, a vacuum tube. And what would end up happening is at a certain frequency, whatever device was inside of the coil, the measuring coil, there would be resonance and there would be a transfer of energy from the grid dip oscillator's coil over into whatever you were measuring, and it would pull current out of the vacuum tube grid and you would see it drop and you would physically see it drop on the meter. So you would sweep a certain set of frequencies wherever this thing was resonant, it would, the current going through the grid of the tube would actually drop. Now, nowadays you can, you can find them not made of vacuum tubes, but made of solid state components, but the operation is exactly the same. We're just measuring current or voltage uh, in a resonant circuit, and when your grid dip oscillator coil inductively couples with whatever you're trying to measure, there'll be a drop in current or voltage, and uh, that lets you know where it's resonant at. Now, in the case of an NOVNA, of course, we can actually view that on a uh, screen, on a graphing screen, which is really nice because we can see exactly where the resonance occurs. It's a little bit more functional than the typical grid dip oscillator where you're just turning a dial and uh, trying to zone in on whatever the resonant frequency of the, the device that you're measuring is. Anyway, you've seen me in the past use this device on, on Rick Shop, my other channel, to measure coax traps. And I'll put a link to those videos below so you can see those. In this video, what I want to do is I want to make a more finished product that uh, is a little bit more professional and works a little bit better for measuring things. And then we'll experiment at the end and see how well it works. All right, over to the bench. Okay, I'm debating on whether I should make my receiving coil, or transmitting coil, I guess it would be the proper thing to call it, two turns or three turns. So I guess, I guess since I originally had great success with a single turn, I'm just going to make it two turns. And the way that I'm going to do that is just I'm going to, trying to keep these leads as short as possible, but I'm going to wind two turns on this form that I just grabbed. This is just a lid off of a container. And I'm going to wind two turns. And that's two. And that should work just fine. 
and I'm just going to tape these coils together in a few spots so they don't move around. Okay, and it seems pretty sturdy. And then I just got a really short piece of coax with an SMA connector on it. And this, for this you have to be a little careful because, although I could connect that directly to the Nano VNA, you really don't want to do that because in order to calibrate the Nano VNA in that fashion, you'd have to screw these pills directly to the Nano VNA and you really don't want to be wearing this connector out. These SMA connectors will wear out over time. So instead what I'll be doing is I'll attach a jumper and then I will attach a barrel connector that way I can attach the, the pills to the barrel connector and if the barrel connector wears out that's an easily replaceable part without replacing the whole nano VNA so that way when I calibrate I'm going to calibrate to the end of this short piece of coax and when I screw this on this out will be what we'll be measuring should give us a more accurate reading. Okay, let's calibrate and see if it works. So I'm going to be measuring from a 40 meter trap up to a UHF antenna. So let's go 10 megahertz up to 500 megahertz, which is a very broad swath. Calibrate the open. And the short. And 50 ohms. And we'll save it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to measure is this 20 meter trap. This is a 20 meter coax trap, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I see if it picks it up. And it does. I'm 
can see our resonant point is at about 14.02 megahertz, which is actually perfect for a 20 meter coax strap. You want to be right below the the actual band that you're going to be transmitting on. And you can see three three things are going on here. We have high resistance showing on this 252 ohms at its resonant point and then you see the reactants change so our reactances up here it's 230 ohms and down here it goes negative, negative 10, negative 9.9 .9. and then you see the phase shift happen as well so right here we see a 90 degree phase shift at its resonant frequency so that's exactly what we would expect to see. So now let's try a 10 meter coax strap. And you can see the resonant point in this is going to be at about 28 even. So once again, this is perfect for a 10 meter trap. You want it to be resonant just outside of where you're actually transmitting. So this one's resonant at 28.075 megahertz, which is quite frankly ideal. And you can see once again, now the phase shift isn't really showing up on this one, I'm not sure why, but you can see the reactance traits shows reactants, reactants switching from positive to negative. So that's accurate enough for, for what I'm trying to achieve here. Looks like this is going to achieve what I wanted to achieve. It gives, gives me a more professional way to measure traps. So I'll hang this up somewhere and hang on to it, and anytime I need to measure or build a trap, it'll be available. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.